Welcome to this introductory tutorial on Satellite 3D version 3. This video is designed to give you a base overview so that you can start creating right away. So be sure to check out our other tutorials to go more in depth and enhance your workflow and efficiency. When you first launch Satellite 3D, you'll be greeted with a new project window. Here you can choose from presets that we provide for you, browse your recent files, or open your own studio templates. For now, I'm going to open the indoor preset. Immediately, you're greeted with the user interface of Satellite 3D. Let's review the layout. First, you have four modules at the top. The setup module, which is where we do most of our work. The render module, where you render out your different scenes. The plans module, where you export PDFs and set lists. And the community tab, where you can share your sets or download sets from your peers. We'll go in depth on all of these in future tutorials. For now, let's go over the setup module. Here is the virtual studio. To navigate, right-click your mouse and drag to orbit your camera, or use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. If you want to move your camera, hold the middle mouse button and click and drag, and you can move your camera's location. You can also use the controls on the bottom right side to do the same thing. The virtual studio is where you manipulate the items in your scene. I can click my model and move her wherever I'd like, or I can move this light wherever I want as well. I can also control the objects themselves with handles that are really easy to use. And you'll also see I have a contextual menu that shows up here, which we'll go over more in depth in a future tutorial. You'll notice every time I select something in the scene, the properties panel on the left changes. This updates dynamically depending on what you're using so that you can get more fine control of that object. I'm going to change the position of my camera and adjust my composition. And that brings us to the camera panel on the top right. This is where the final lighting calculations are done so that you can see your completed render of your scene. You'll have controls for the camera at the top, focal length on the right, and more controls on the bottom right. We'll go more in depth with this in a future tutorial as well. Next, we have our set list. Here you'll find all of the items that are on your set. You can select them here, show or hide them with the eyeball icon, lock them on the right hand side so that you can't accidentally move them, and in version 3, there's also a new ghost feature by clicking the box, which turns any object semi-transparent so that it's not in your way if you're trying to manipulate a busy scene. You can rearrange anything in your set list by simply clicking and dragging it in and out of folders. You can create your own groups and axes, which we'll talk about in future tutorials. Next, we have the top view. Here is where you will see an orthographic top-down view of the studio. You can navigate this by using your scroll wheel to zoom in and out, or right-clicking and dragging to pan around the scene. You also have control buttons on the bottom right if you prefer. Next, let's talk about this panel in the bottom. This is where the rest of your tools will lie. First, we have the timeline. Here's where all of your snapshots will go, which we'll talk about here in a moment. We also have the animation tab. This is where you can set and manipulate all of your keyframes in your scene, which again, we will cover in a future tutorial as this is a very robust system. Next, we have the Models tab, which is filled with preset models we can choose from. To bring a model into the scene, simply click and drag them into the studio. Next, we have the Light tab. Here you'll find all of the different light fixtures that come with Satellite 3D, or you can create your own custom light fixtures as well. Because there are so many options, we've created filters on the left for you to choose from to quickly find the light or light shaper you're looking for. You can also search for the light shaper here. And just like the 3D models, you can drag and drop any light into the scene and you're good to go. Next, we have the equipment page. In here, you'll find all of the different cameras you have access to, including the new cinema cameras. We also have a light meter, backgrounds, scrims, light blockers, reflectors, and V-flats. And just like everything else, simply drag and drop it into the scene to manipulate it. Finally, we have the assets tab. This is where all of the different 3D assets are that you can use in Satellite 3D. The content has been greatly expanded and it can be kind of overwhelming. So just like with the lights, we have filters on the left that you can use to quickly find your items. If there's something that you can't quite find, simply search for it and it will show up right here. I can bring this into the scene and now I have my props ready to go. A quick tip if you're working with multiple monitors or need more customization, you can pop out this bottom panel into its own menu by either pressing E or any of these arrow indicators above the tabs. This allows you to put this floating panel wherever you'd like, close down the lower panel, and better control your user interface layout. Finally, at the top left of the Virtual Studio, you'll see this compass. If you click on it, you'll find controls for your environment. 
We're gonna cover the environment in a separate tutorial because there is so much that you can do with it. Once you've created your scene and you're happy with how it looks, you'll want to use your timeline by creating a snapshot. You can do that by either clicking the snap button here or on your camera view, you can click the camera icon. Once you click it, a new snapshot will be saved to the timeline. A snapshot saves your virtual studio in whatever state it was in when you took the picture. If you change something in the scene slightly, it will ask you to apply the new changes. So I'll simply apply them. If I would like to have alternate versions of my scene or completely new scenes, I can go ahead and create a new snapshot. For this example, I'm going to change the background to maybe like a peach color, and I'm gonna change her outfit to something a little different. I also might take this light and put a blue gel on it just for fun, and maybe adjust the power a little bit, and there's a new scene that I really like. So instead of applying this to the snapshot I currently have, I can just click the new snap button and it will save a brand new state of my studio. To switch between scenes, I can simply double click and change back and forth between any snapshot. To rename a snap, just select it, go up to the top left, double click and name it. I think this scene is looking really good, but I wanna change one more thing about the model. If I select her, the contextual menu will show up here. I have an option for this button here to make her look directly at the camera. And the one below that will make her eyes look directly at the camera as well. And that to me feels a lot better for this particular look. So I'm going to apply those changes. And now I have my two different snaps that I can switch between just by double clicking them. So you've created your scene, you're happy with your snaps. Now it's time to export your plans. So we're gonna go to the plans module. Here you have the option to export a PDF or a JPEG. In this case, I'm gonna choose PDF. A new document will be added and you can rename it on the top right. You can choose which pages to include in your PDF, such as the cover, the storyboard, the shots, and the equipment list. The cover page provides a great introduction to your document, which you can customize with your own information. The storyboard lays out the different shots in the scene, but first we have to tell it which shots we want included in this set plan. So on the right-hand side, I can simply check the ones that I want to include in my document. We have the option to change the label of each thumbnail or to add a description. As you add more scenes to your document, the document will update dynamically. Next, we have the pages that show each set in detail. We have the final rendered view, we have the 3D view, as well as the top-down view. The 3D view and the top-down view can be maneuvered in the same way as in the setup module. If you click on the gear icon, you also have more options such as your field of view, your brightness, and the floor grid. To me, that looks nice and clear for my team. The top-down view lets you choose what labels are shown and where they're placed. In the gear menu, you can choose to show or hide your lines, your labels, and your floor grid. After each set is the equipment list and their settings so that you know exactly what equipment you need and what settings they were put on. The last page of the document contains the packing list of every single item combined from all your different sets. This gives you an accurate checklist so that you don't forget anything at home. You can also add notes if needed to each item and overall notes at the bottom of the page. Before you export, you can render your individual shots to provide more fidelity if you'd like. And when you're ready to export your PDF, simply press export, name it and save it where you'd like to be able to share with your team or print. And that's just about it for getting started with Satellite 3D version three. Once again, be sure to check out our other tutorials to go more in depth so that you can enhance your workflow and find the tips and tricks you need to create anything you desire. We're super excited to see what you create with Satellite 3D, but above all, have fun creating, enjoy Satellite 3D version three, and if you have any questions whatsoever, let us know. We'll see you in the next one.